Let's take a look at two different functions. The function f is going from real numbers to real numbers, and it's given by f of x equals x squared. And that's just the parabola that you've seen a million times before. It looks like that. And here's the function g, which goes from real numbers to the real numbers greater than or equal to 0. And that's given by g of x equals x squared. Looks the same. But this function f, that's not surjective. Well, this function is surjective. What's the difference? Well, in this case, for f, we have a codomain of real numbers. You can think of that as, uh, in our graph here, the values on the y-axis. All the real numbers. That means all the ones up here as well as the ones down here. Well, this one has a codomain of all real numbers greater than or equal to 0. And you can see that that's kind of up here where the parabola is. We don't have any of the stuff that's down here. And that kind of gets at the idea of what it means to be surjective. Here's the definition. A function f from a set a to a set b is said to be surjective, or onto, if for every element y in the set b there is an element x in the set a such that f of x equals y. Let's look at an example. Suppose I have a set A with the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I have a set B with the letters A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to define a function phi that maps 1 to A, 2 to C, 3 to B, and 4 to D. Is this surjective? Well, let's look at the definition. It says for every element Y in the set B. Okay, here's the set B, so I'm talking about these four elements here, A, B, C, and D. There is an element X in the set A, such that f of x equals y, or in our case, phi of x equals y. Okay, so let's look at a. So I have phi of 1 equals a. Okay, that works. How about b? Well, phi of 3 equals b. That works. How about c? Phi of 2 equals c. And how about d? Phi of 4 equals d. So yeah, in this case, I would say that the function phi is indeed surjective, or onto. Now let's look at another example. Again, I have the same sets, a and b. Now I'm going to define a function chi that maps 1 to a, 2 to c, 3 to c, and 4 to d. Is this surjective? Well, again, we're going to look at the set b here. And how about a? Well, chi of 1 equals a. How about b? Chi of, well, nothing here. Nothing gets mapped to b. So in this case, the function chi, I can say, is not surjective because it doesn't meet the requirements of the definition given above. So how do you prove that a function is surjective? Well, again, we're going to look at some simple steps here. How to prove that a function f from a set a to a set b is surjective. Step one, let y be some element of b. Step two, find an element x in a such that f of x equals y. And a couple of notes here. What we're really doing in the second step here is just solving an equation. And you'll see some examples of this in a second. And I should also point out that while trying to prove that a function is injective is relatively simple, sometimes it can be pretty difficult to prove that a function is surjective. And this uh, two-step process here really only works when you have uh, some very uh, simple functions to deal with. Sometimes uh, finding an x in a such that f of x equals y can be pretty challenging, but I'm going to stick to some pretty simple examples here right now. Like this. Show that the function f from the set of integers to the set of 5 times the integers, 5z, given by f of n equals 5n is surjective. Okay, here's the proof. Let y be an element of 5z. You notice that step one, let y be an element of whatever the b is. And in this case, the b is 5z. So that's just pretty much copying step one. Now I'm going to let y equal 5x for some integer x. Why can I do that? Well, because y is an element of 5z. So y has the form of 5x for some integer x. That's just what it must be if it's in this set here. But then I can say that x, which equals y divided by 5, is also an integer. How do I know that? Well, I know that um, x is an integer. And so if I bring the 5 over here, 
x is still an integer, remember, so that means y divided by 5 is also an integer. So f of x I can think of as 5x, which and I'm just getting that from the formula right here, where x is y over 5, and that gives me y. In other words, I found an x in A such that f of x equals y, and this is what I mean by just solving an equation here. So f must be surjective. Let's look at another example. Suppose I have the function g, which goes from real numbers to the set of positive real numbers, and it's given by g of x equals e to the x, and I want to show that that is surjective. Here's the proof. Step one, let y be an element of the positive real numbers, and again, I'm just copying step one up here. In this case, my set b is the set of positive real numbers. Then, since y is a positive real number, the natural log of y is a real number. So how do I know that? Well, just think about what natural log of y looks like. If I were to just quickly sketch a simple graph, it looks something like this. And if I know that uh, y is a positive real number, the natural log of that is also going to be a real number. Um, because uh, we're looking at, we're, I know we normally have x and y here, but in this case, um, think of y as being the positive real number here, and we're taking natural log of that to get something here. So g of the natural log of y, and that's, g of x right here, is e to the natural log of y. I'm just plugging in here. But e and natural log are inverses of each other, so that just gives me y. So g is surjective. I found an element x that's in a such that f of x equals y. And my x in this case, I didn't actually write it out, but I'm thinking of my x as being the natural log of y. OK, what if I want to show that something is not surjective? Here's an example. Show that the function h, which goes from real numbers to real numbers, given by h of x equals the absolute value of x, is not surjective. Okay, so I want to show that something's not surjective. And to show that something is not surjective, all I need to do is find one counterexample. So if you think of this, this is an absolute value graph, which looks like a v here, something like this. And I know that uh, I'm going from real numbers to real numbers, and that here is the where I want to start here because I'm looking at the set B to begin with. So I want to find something in the set B that's going to cause a problem. The set B here corresponds to, uh, on my graph, thinking of the y-axis. And I can think of something like, how about down here, negative 2. I don't think there's anything that's getting mapped to negative 2. So uh, when I look at this equation that I'm solving for, I'm really asking, where can I say that I get negative 2? What value of x is going to get mapped to that? And if you think about that, there's no solution to this equation. There's nothing that I can plug in for x and take the absolute value of that's going to give me negative 2. So therefore, just by this simple counterexample, I can say that h is not surjective. And you notice that to prove that something is not surjective or not onto, it's much easier than proving that it is surjective. All I need to do is find one counterexample, and that's enough to show that's not surjective.